This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Cruise Man, and today I am working on my Goldwing. What I'm going to do, believe it or not, I'm going to be installing another brand new battery. And a lot of you have asked me, because I think I mentioned this in one of my shorts, that uh, I made a bonehead move and screwed up my battery. And let me just tell you what happened. I came in the other day uh, out to the garage and it had probably been a few hours since I pulled the bike into the garage. And I, when I, as soon as I opened the garage door, I knew something was wrong because I could see some lights flashing. And when I checked the bike, the left headlight was kind of jittering and flashing. The right headlight wasn't on at all. My fog lights were on, but they were flickering. So I knew, I knew I had killed the battery. I knew, I knew I'd done something. One of two things are possible. I had pulled the bike into the garage. <clears throat> I had been moving that Triumph, you know, and switching places between my little garage and this garage. And I had pulled the Goldwing back in, had it running. And when I pulled it in, it's possible that when I turned the ignition off using the uh, switch on the dash or on the console, that I somehow switched it over to accessory mode and didn't realize it and just left it there. I don't think I did that. The other possibility, which has happened to me before, and I know it's happened to some of you, it's possible that when I turned the ignition off, the motorcycle was still slightly moving, like rolling. And on, I've had this happen before, where if you do not have the motorcycle completely still and stopped, when you turn the bike off, it will leave on your lights. It'll shut the engine off, but it won't leave your, it won't turn off your lights. I had this happen at a restaurant one time. I didn't know what I had done, uh, but somebody else mentioned that they had had a similar issue with their Goldwing. And apparently if you do not have the motorcycle completely stopped and probably a good practice, and I'm gonna start doing this, make sure you've always got the front brake lever pulled in when you turn the bike off. Then you know the bike is stopped because the, <laughs> the brake's on. So well, let, me, let me finish the rest of the story. So what I did is obviously I tried, I couldn't even turn the bike off. These lights were flickering and flashing and it, I don't think it had enough power to even recognize the smart key. I couldn't even turn the ignition off. It would not stop. There's no way for me to turn the lights off. So I, my only other option was to try to jump start the bike and get it running and see if it could generate enough power to possibly, uh, you know, recharge the battery enough to operate properly. I knew the battery was dead. I knew I was never going to save the battery at this point. But uh, so in fact, I went ahead and ordered a brand new battery, which I now have and am going to install today. So I jump started the motorcycle using my Skosh Power Up 700 and it started right up and it ran, but I noticed that on the dash, uh, you'll notice you get those little stars or asterisks or whatever they are, where you normally would see tour mode and what drive mode you're in. So that was messed up and my check engine light was on. Uh, I let it run for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes and was able to turn it off and then I was able to actually restart the bike but it barely restarted on its own. Uh, so then what I did is I plugged in the battery tender and I thought I'm going to leave it overnight see if it will come back to a full charge. It never did. So uh, the, the light on the battery tender was red the next morning so it, it, it has damaged one or more cells in the battery. I'm sure I could take the battery and have it tested. Now being brain dead, 
I completely forgot I had a perfectly good battery that I took out of the bike in my other garage on a battery tender. It was sitting in there. I could have been riding the bike. I just forgot that I still had that other battery in there. So um, nevertheless, doesn't matter. Weather's a little nicer today. It's going to get up in the 70s today, so I may like to ride today. I'm, I, I was able to get the... Uh, the dash, the little stars where the tour mode is, I was able to get that to correct itself. I think I had to put the bike in gear to get it to do that. And then it finally, that came back while the bike was running. So I'm going to install this new battery. And um, I'm hoping that after I ride the bike a couple of times, that check engine light will go out, that mill, mill lamp. It's pretty common if your battery's dead or defective that that mill light will come on. And generally that will correct itself on its own. So I'm going to try that and I'll update you and just, you know, let you watch me uh, replace this battery for the second time in a year. Um, I was able to get the battery for about $150. Uh, they've gone up, obviously, like everything. We'll get that started, and thanks for joining me today. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe. And I uh, put in your comments below if you've ever had this happen, if you've ever accidentally had your motorcycle stay on when you got off the bike and you didn't know it and it killed the battery. So you've seen me do this before. If you watch my channel, you know, I put a new battery in. I don't even think it's been a year. So you know how it's how it's supposed to go. And I've got this charging cable for my Skosh, which also doubles as a battery tender connector. As you can see, I've only got uh, one. This is the ground wire that goes to my power accessory hub. And then this is the ground wire that goes to my Skosh uh, connector here. And then over here I have the positive, the hot wire that goes to my power accessory hub, which is from Pathfinder LED. And then I have the, the red wire that goes to my, or the uh, positive that goes to this Skosh. I like to just pull these over to the side so that they're out of the way. I have an entire video showing how to swap out the battery, so I'll put a link to that in the upper corner of this video. And of course, it's in my video maintenance series. There's a 10 millimeter bolt. Here I'm removing that passenger foot peg or foot rest cover. Makes it much easier to get the battery out. It's almost impossible to get the battery out unless you take it okay. off. Okay, now we should have pretty clear access to get the battery out. Okay, battery's out. And I don't know why Honda didn't decide to use lithium ion just to save on weight. They did so many other things on this bike to save on weight. Okay, so this is my new battery here. Same factory, boring, UASA. You know, just the one that comes in the gold wing, nothing, nothing special. AGM battery. Okay, so that's now in place. The battery is in where it has to be. And we'll see if we can hit those threads the first time. Sometimes you get lucky. actually caught the threads. I did. That's the second time in a row now I've done that. And I'm going to let the screwdriver do the work. Okay. How many of you know what I forgot? Uh, I forgot. I forgot my skosh connector. <laughs> So, we get to do this again. 
My Honda Goldwing maintenance videos for the 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing go into excruciating detail on how to replace the battery and over 77 videos on maintenance. So check the links in the description of this video. And once again, he hits the threads. Okay. Now, got my connector. Now let's see if we can get the bike to start. Now we have ignition. Now we have liftoff. So I'm going to let the bike run for a while and come up to temperature. It hadn't run in a few days since this whole battery debacle began. So we'll do that and then I'm going to reinstall my little foot peg cover passenger footrest cover and uh, get the side covers back on button everything up and I'll put it on the battery tender and let it sit overnight uh, just make sure it gets a good full charge but I'll take it out for a ride I want to see let's go see yeah I think I think my mill lamp is still on uh, let me go show you that so you can see that happened uh, the other day not sure if you can see that but I'm thinking that that's gonna go away on its own, I hope. Um, it usually does like its own reset after you ride the bike a few times, go through the gears, maybe ride around the neighborhood a little bit. So I'll take it for a ride once I get everything back together and uh, I'll let you know if that mill lamp goes out. I wanted to also mention, this is the first video I've done with my new Insta360 uh, X3 camera. I got one for my birthday a couple days ago, or yesterday actually. And um, let me know what you think in the comments about the video quality or, now the audio I'm actually using a Rode microphone, so I'm not using the built-in audio of the Insta360. I'm synchronizing the audio with my external mic, but I'd be curious to know what you think of the video quality. Uh, I'm just using the single lens. I'm not using the 360. I will be doing some 360 video eventually, especially on motovlogs. But if you have an Insta360 uh, and you use it, let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been. Maybe you have some tips or tricks I need to know. And um, okay, I'm gonna go get the bike back together and I will let you know how the mill lamp situation goes. So as you can probably tell by now, this is my first attempt at shooting a video using this new Insta360 camera mounted on the handlebar of my Goldwing. Now I'm new at this, so I'm still learning how to edit this 360 content. But what's really interesting is that it allows me to zoom out or zoom in and of course this does change the resolution of the video but of course I can also pan the video so that you can see around corners you can see things I'm passing by it's a, a very interesting thing that's going to take some time for me to learn but I'd like to know your thoughts on this Insta360 how do you like the video how do you like this idea of having one camera with multiple angles being able to switch if I see something off to the side I can quickly turn the camera over there to show you what's going on just let me know in the comments down below do you think this is something that I should continue to use or just go back to the uh, GoPro system I should also mention that the mill lamp did go out as soon as I started the bike this time and backed out of the driveway. So everything is performing normally with this new battery. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And remember what I always say, ride often, but ride safe.